<laughs> I can tell from my beard the uh, conditions have really changed. It went from above freezing, well above freezing, to well below freezing. We got just a dusting of snow. It's an ideal time to come out and then study what's going on. So I've come to a brand new area. I checked my all my snares, nothing happening. So I'm gonna set a couple traps. I'm up here on a, a ridge and a blowdown, and I cut a fresh rabbit track here. And because of all the traffic they're getting, the dog walkers and all that stuff, that's a lot of pressure on them, which of course the dog walkers don't realize, but they're pressuring them all the time. And so the hares have to go off and hide. They can't forage all the time. So what they're doing is they're going from cover to cover in this open space and they're looking for these blowdown areas. So I've got a nice trail underneath a couple of logs and then into some other ones over here. So I'm going to set a snare down in here and try to trap this particular hare that's doing this runway here. So I originally cut the track up here and then the hare is coming through here and then it actually came right through here. Now I've already added the second branch here but this is from the existing tree. So I can actually anchor to that and you can see that the hair goes all the way over into that cover. So what I'm thinking is right now the hair's probably in that blow down there with security. You can see not much cover down in here but down in here where that spruce is and all up through here is really really good cover for hair. And you can't just set a snare in the middle of the runway here because there's no, there's nothing forcing it to go through here. Um, I could try down there, but it's a little tight. I just like this spot. I just like this spot here because it's forcing the hair through a nice area and it feels nice and comfortable. So when it's running through from here down and across into here, then uh, it can make its way over there if it wants to, or it can take a pause. Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to put a snare together. So we're just going to cut off for about two feet of wire here. Just making a loop here. And I'm going to twist the end over. I'm not sure if you guys ever play any online games, but Guns of Glory is pretty neat. It's a very addictive game. You're going to do a battle against other clans. And the fun thing about it is you get to do it all around the world. For size, I like to go about a fist size and then off the ground about a thumb and a, a, thumb and a hand or so. And you can experiment with this to see what works best for you. I find that works best for me. One really cool feature about the game is you get to develop air shifts uh, using cutting edge scientific technology. So you're kind of on the cusp of that, uh, that big technological barrier to uh, medieval war. So you're gonna go in, you're gonna design these warships, go in and destroy things. You could set traps and uh, you do a lot of collecting, a lot of you know modern foraging, going around collecting all these different things to strengthen your, your army and defeat your enemy. So here you go, here's our snare. Let's go set these off in the woods, all over the place, and see if we can get ourselves a meal. A snowshoe hare need to pause every so often because they're not long distance runners. They're excellent fast speed runners, but they're going from cover to cover. Basically, it's to evade predators, but they're not long distance runners. So they, you know, if they're getting pursued by a wolf or something, they're eventually gonna get caught up to, unless they can dive and duck into that cover. I just wanna let the camera run here and show you how I dress up this snare. So the rabbit will actually eat these cedars here. So it'll be another way to entice it to come in. So I did make one mistake here. Um, I didn't step on the path necessarily, I stepped over it, but those hair are not going to be super comfortable walking through any of those divots there. They're going to want to go through here. So here's an idea of the finished set. I think that looks pretty inviting. You can see I've made kind of a natural funnel just to get it directed in there. I've added a chin-up bar. I don't like to use super thick ones at the bottom, and then I make that V-shape, and that'll direct that hair's head right through the snare. So I want to give you some perspective here. We set the other snare on the other side of this brush pile and then coming through here you can see there's a rabbit track there and then as you make your way back here 
this is a really good pinch point I actually kind of doctored this area up a little bit I broke a big branch that's kind of in the way and if you look this way you can see that there's a hair track leaving so I suspect it probably just jumped a rabbit out of this spot so this is a nice little tangle area that that rabbit's been evading predators from in this little space here so you might wonder why would I put one at that side and at that side well thing is I can ca catch a hair on both sides it doesn't mean just because there's a hair caught on one side doesn't mean that another hair might not come on on this side and that's exactly what happens as you remove one hair from an area another new hair moves in and takes over it's pretty much as simple as that here's a woodpecker going behind me here so I have don't hesitate to trap the same hair um, because to move on to a new set of hairs is quite a bit of walking so you want to concentrate on trying to get that one hair out of each area before you move on to another one let's explain what's going on here so I what I've done is I always say I added these sticks here this was already there to attach to the original tree I added this as well because it was a fairly big opening this was existing and you can see it kind of tapers down I added a couple more sticks here just to block those paths off so <clears throat> It's anchored here. I've got it just the right height off the ground. I've got my chin-up stick. I've got my V sticks here. I'm adding the chin-up stick because I'm not getting the right gap. I just wanted to lift its chin up just to get through here. And then I've added on the left side some uh, vines that are hanging around. And the vines, what it's going to do is confuse the hair. A hair knows it can push through a vine. It it does. It knows it can't push through the sticks. So generally speaking. If you fill this area up with really rigid thick sticks it'll think well something happened a tree fell down i can't get through this opening anymore but if you put these around it confuses the hare's eyes but it also thinks hey i can push through that it's just a little vine so leaving these little vines around confuses the hare and then they don't notice this artificial thing in the way so the idea is if a hare is running through here darting to jump into cover it's not going to pay too much attention to all this that's going on and just put its head through and then it's going to think it's into safety but it's actually not going to be at all anybody want to try to guess what those things are it's making those tracks all the way up here here's a closer look put your guesses down in the comments it's got one long toe one short toe another short toe and looks like a little dew claw at the back you guys figure it out. Hey, good morning guys. I got my little man here, Holden. He's gonna give me a hand checking the snares. Uh, I'm trying to get him <laughs> to <laughs> you wipe it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's slippery out here. I'm trying to get him uh, a little bit more involved in the outdoors, but uh, also hunting and snaring is one of those things that you can bring a kid along and it doesn't make too much difference. They yeah, have to understand a few rules, like not stepping on the rabbit trails, and that's pretty much it. I mean, you can make as much noise as you want, so you don't have to worry about that. You have to worry about scaring animals away. Um, yeah, and then you kind of learn the habits of wildlife and you learn the behaviors and you can do some tracking and all that good stuff. So we're gonna go check our snares, see what we got. If we do catch something, we're gonna turn it into a fresh meal. So I've got an idea about that. Um, got a bunch of snares out yesterday and we think it's pretty exciting to come check them right yeah. you never know if you're going to catch something and it's always exciting when you do so uh what do you think if we catch something we'll make a meal for the boys uh -huh. yeah holland's got his cousins up he's got three cousins all about the same age and they have a buddy over so we'll uh make a nice meal for them something that they can have for lunch and they can see from beginning to end field to fork so we're coming up on our first snet here Looks like we have some fresh tracks here. I used to have a snare up in this area here, but because it's in close proximity to this walking trail, I didn't want, I want to put I didn't want to put one out in there. But uh, it used to be very productive, and I could see that a new hare has already moved in over here. Is where I had a set a couple days ago on that tree, and I caught one, so I was hesitant in putting another one in the spot. So. Maybe next year we'll have to put another one. This is a good spot, I think, right? Yeah. You see all these fresh, super, super fresh tracks. They like to go in these blowdowns here. There's lots of cover in there, lots of places for them to hide. First set, and it's empty. But again, it looks like a rabbit actually went through there. 
not too long ago. So that one's not working. Um, I noticed that these were um, tracks from yesterday because um, yesterday when we checked it, we had to stop it because we saw that the tracks were running around the trap. So then these are just traps, tracks from yesterday. And if you guys can identify that track, it's got two toes. Any ideas? Holden, got an idea? Deer. What do you think it is? I think it's a deer. Yep, it's a deer for sure. Fresh this morning looks like, right? Mm-hmm. There's not very much snow on top of it. Yep, you're right. Let's see if you can figure out. There's a track there. There's a track here. There's a track there. That's got snow, more snow on it. Track there. And there's the snare. And it goes into a big thicket of cover. Did we miss one? Or what happened? Look closely at the tracks. So those tracks are actually not hair tracks. They're from a squirrel. It looks like a little red squirrel is actually hiding in there. So we didn't miss a hair here. So that's good news and bad news. Good news is obviously we, our set didn't fail. The bad news is, well, there's not a hair nearby. It's always good news when I have fresh rabbit tracks near my sets. Yeah. Do you see fresh tracks? Mm -hmm. Where are they? Right here. Right there, where do they go? All the way under there yeah un under that log over there but you know what what i didn't set a snare over there i set a snare to the right so can you follow the rabbit tracks over to the right and see where they lead to okay okay so get up <coughs> and i want you to if you have to go around this big bush you can go around the bush okay okay go around the bush and then find the tracks on the other side of it Cut over to the left here. Cut over to the left. Remember the track over here. So. Over here. Yeah, you're right. There's a track that goes that way, but that it splits over here. One right. over. One over. I don't see where it's. Oh, Kay. right there. What do you see? There's a hair right there. There's a hair right there. Actually, so if you look over here, there's a trail here and then right there it splits and goes off over to oh, the left yeah, and then where does it go into the snare into the snare so go run up and see if you got a rabbit there and I see that one. yeah we did get one so that one that was my under the log set so it was set just under the log there so yeah we got one what do you think yeah yeah we get to eat lunch okay do you want to hold this while i undo it can you film Sure. Okay, take your gloves off. Here we go, bud. This one died a long time ago. It's almost frozen. Cool? Yeah. Let's undo this and we'll uh, throw it in the bag and keep going. Here we go. All right guys, this snare is not touched. Nothing came through. There's completely no snow disturbed. But if you look on the other side, there's tracks. So what did the hare do? It came up to here, it said, nope. I'm just gonna go to this open space over here and make my way through. So that's why we didn't get a hair back in there and it spent a lot of time back in there and there's some tracks it spent a lot of time back in here and then it came out to the front door here and it said mm, i don't like that thing i'm not going to go through it i found a better way so you guys might think that these hair are completely defenseless but they're not i have trail camera footage of them actually being able to smell the snares so when they're going through the snares it's actually them making a decision on whether or not to go through them they know it's there uh, but they're getting tricked and actually through a natural selection and through a very long period of time If you put enough pressure on them, they'll actually figure out, you know, the ones that figure it out will be the ones that reproduce So it's a way of keeping them healthy keeping the population healthy keeping the smartest ones the healthiest ones um, in the population and 
to be honest, you can't get rid of all of them anyway. They reproduce so fast, it's a renewable resource, completely impossible to, to, to wipe them out. In fact, this is an area I trapped before and now new rabbits are moving in from other areas because it's a good spot. So I take one out and then a new one just reappears and in the spring they're going to reproduce like crazy and fill this whole area back up again. Alright, so there's a long run here. It goes this way and it goes all the way through this open bush lot here. Pretty open. So what I did was I put a, a stick. This was an old run and the hairs were coming through here before. So I put a stick down across because it's kind of on a hump and I know they don't want to go left and right. So you can see there's lots of new tracks here. And actually it looks like one went through but also if you look to the right here they actually also went around so some went around there's a T intersection here so some the rerouting because they don't like what I've put in the middle but something actually did go through that snare because you can see one step another step here so what I think is the snare is actually probably too big so it probably went right through it or it pushed it out of the way like that and went by. So that's the real tricky part about snaring is you try to get them to go through a certain area and then they just go around it, especially in these open spaces. That's why I like to trap those blowdowns because they want to go in that cover and they're expecting things to be tightly placed up against them. Whereas in open spaces, they just, if they can go around, they will. So as you can see, there's some tracks here. The hair came from this direction, um, ran through here, planted its back feet here and jumped over the snare um and then kept going <laughs> really yeah that's kind of weird though like, well kind of smart right yeah like why would it put its head in there and it can't really go around it well it can but pretty smart right yeah yeah so that's what it's holding talking about those are those clearly defined back feet and then you can see there's nothing until the hair touches the ground on the back side there and then continues forward. So we would have come up to here and be like, uh, that doesn't smell right. I don't want to put my head in there. It jumped clear over and kept going completely unharmed. Yeah. Yeah, bummer for us. Yeah. In an interesting situation here, I got Holden with me <laughs> and uh, we have a, there's a hair, snowshoe hair in one of those little hiding spots I showed you guys before yesterday. We've got a snare on one entrance and a snare on the other entrance and it's not in either one so somehow it finds its way inside without getting caught. I'll show you it right now. Let's zoom in here. So there's the hair. Alive and well. Here's Holden, <laughs> just right there. We have the snares right there at one entry. See, where's that hair again? I find it right in, in there. There's the hair. There's the snare at the front entryway here. And then at the back door on the other side of that trail. There's another snare. So somehow it found its way in there without getting trapped. So the question is, it'd be nice if we had a gun with us. We could just grab it right now. I'll probably leave it in there. And then maybe when we, if we scare it, we might be able to get it to go out the back door or the front door here. All right, let's see what happens. Remember those? Hairs are sit and hide, sit and hide, sit and hide. They don't like to move, they don't have to. So we come up here on the other side. We can uh, check to see if that snare is set properly on the other side of it first. It's a little bit easier to access. Let's see how it got in there.
see it, bud? I see it. It's that that furry bit. That furry bit right there. And I can see the tracks. It looks like it avoided the snare. Oh, I see the snare. So the snare is too small. It moved the snare out of the way. It's sitting in there now. Oops. <coughs> okay, sitting there now. Kind of thinking about moving there. Yeah, it's in the snare. Okay, so it's in the snare. You can block it here and duck if you need to. Alright guys, there we go, a nice little bunny. Obviously this one's nice and fresh. Caught this the uh, the hard way, I guess. The beauty of cooking at home is we get to use a slow cooker. And a slow cooker is definitely an asset when you're trying to cook wild game because wild game is super, super duper lean. And if you don't give it time to relax, it's going to be chewy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine my hair with potato and carrot and we're gonna add some this was my old signature spice roasted garlic and peppers goes with everything good we have some bay leaves peppercorns and then on top of that we'll add um, some quite a bit of salt the salt will help tenderize it and i found if you just use lean meat like this it's going to pretty chewy and dry so i'm going to add some butter to it and that'll add that fat dimension of course you could add some lard you could add bear fat if you had some um, any kind of fat will do. Basically what you want to do is kind of moisten it up. So we're gonna combine all these ingredients, we're gonna put it in the crock pot and we're gonna let it go overnight. So overnight's gonna help tenderize it. Um, the longer the better. I've done this up to three days and it's still good. In fact, it gets better. All the bone marrow comes out of the bones and ends up where you want it inside the meal. I wanna show you guys um, the reaction that kids have to cleaning an animal. So I'm gonna invite all the boys over and they're gonna watch me prepare it. Obviously I can't show in detail what's going to happen here, but the boys are gonna collect around and we're going to uh, film their reactions and see what a nine, 10 year old uh, boy and there's a four year old too, what their reactions to cleaning an animal. If you guys wanna see all that stuff, then you have to become a member of the channel. So you have to hit that join button and then I'll show you in big, great detail exactly how to clean animals. But unfortunately we can't do that here. Ready? There goes one leg. Ready? Mmm, God. Ellen, uh, Ellen, 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 It's two. Ready? <laughs> there goes four. Oh my god. Oh. <gasps> okay, remember we split the back open? I do not like it. No. Yo, no. Has River no done way. this already before? So blood. No, there won't be any blood until we get later on. Oh my god. You ripped my skin off? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did he say? You probably you rip my skin Probably off? could. It would be very painful. My rabbit. If this uh, rabbit can't feel any rabbit. pain anymore, right? Yeah, he's dead. dead. You want to eat something? No, he's no. going to eat candy and watch. Oh. River. <laughs> he doesn't care. Oh my. Do you get hair off? Can you get some rabbit hair on there? Who cares? Eat it. There you go. It would be nice if we got some fur for my room. Faces. You ready for the blood now? No! no! Is it going to spray? No, shouldn't. You're just gonna slice the neck? Yeah, I'm gonna break the bones first though if we can. Oh, there's some bones. Oh! Oh, oh my! A lot of blood. Oh my! Oh, oh, oh no! There goes the head! Ew! Right, and that's, Ew! So feel, feel, feel your soft guts until you feel the, your sternum. 
That's your sternum there. That's the hard bone that protects your heart. <laughs> and it's the end of the ribs, so you can feel the end of your ribs too. <laughs> oh! Soft guts. <laughs> right, soft guts, sternum, <laughs> ribs. And then all yeah. the rest is just connected at the front, right? Does that make sense? There's his armpit. River, did you yeah, touch armpit. it and then eat candy again? We're just gonna go through. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Now, we, if we're lucky, it won't smell too bad, but it might smell a little bit. I smell it. Oh, yeah, I smell it. Oh, my that's, God. That's not guts, though. Okay, want to guess what that is? That's heart. 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 That's, the heart. that's what Reed ate. And how yeah. tasty was the heart, Reed? <laughs> it was good. Okay. Just like the, the turkey this heart. This red tissue is your liver, mm. so that filters out toxins in your body. Liver is really good. So if you don't have no, a liver, no, you don't have a liver. this. What Listen, is Joshua. this? That was your guts. Yeah, that's, that's the guts. Colon. What part of the guts do you think that is? The poopy part. Yeah, the poopy no. part. Okay, so there's the hair. That's going to go into the crock pot. And then we're going to add our potatoes, onions, uh, peppercorns, bay leaves, and our roasted garlic and peppers. Doesn't look very good on camera. Tastes good with the carrots. Like a bite full of meat and carrots. Well, that's what's in there for. Carrots, potatoes, onion, spices. Garlic? Garlic, um, garlic and herbs, spices. What are you eating? Chicken. Is that chicken? <laughs> Rabbit. Yeah, rabbits do. Is it good? Rabbit's doing candy, looks like. I ate the heart. You ate the heart? Yeah. Was it good or chewy? Or both? It was good. Are you and still chewy. eating it? Are you still eating it? Yeah. The heart? Or is it a potato? It's a bit tomato. <laughs> potato. <laughs> it's probably hot. <laughs> it's good? Yep. Yeah. First time I'm rabbit? Uh huh. That was like maybe my yeah, second. That was like my fifth. Yeah, you do. You're fifth. Yeah. You have some more. Are you done? I'm good. You good? You're it's too plate? hot for me to bite into yet. There, there's a couple more in there. Hi. Oh, good. Mhm. Mm Very good. That little string right there. That looks like rabbit fur. Probably a piece of muscle fiber. You need to tell people who you are. I'm the wooded beardsman's sister. And that's this not a hair, that's a piece of muscle, Oh, I don't know. Muscle tissue. Can you see that? It's very too small. Close. Probably an eye, somebody's eyelash. Only I would find a piece of hair in my food. <laughs> <laughs> you find a piece of hair in my food. Duncan? Oh, that's a good choice. <laughs> Mm -mm. <laughs> Go eat your rabbit! You find bone? Uh-huh. What about peas? Big peas one. would be good in here. Sure. At the last minute. I'll give a little bit more of explosion in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you like, Jim. <laughs> it's a little drier than I like. Yeah, it's a little dry. I put butter in it because it was really dry. So I added some butter in. What about Worcestershire sauce? You could. And a soup though? It just needs It would more, make it more tender. It just needs fat. And flavor, like more flavor too. It just needs more fat. It's a dry meat. What else did you put in there? A bunch of spices. Good for you, Compelling footage. Mm hmm. <laughs> Open up my watch time. <laughs> All right, coming up right here now, we have our first hair that's actually committed to the trail. It's going to go through. Let's see what it does. Keep an eye on this. Uh, what? No. No, no. Hey, what did it do? Man, this deserves an instant replay. Let's check that again. Comes up to this. Comes up to the snare. What? What? No. It totally karate chopped that thing out of the way. Let's watch this up close. Look at that. Whack. Just pushes it over and then pops its head up in celebration. That hair defeated us. Unbelievable. Totally amazing.
and then now that that branch is pushed over they pretty much have rule of it comes up sniffs it knows it's there hops around it no problem